America isn't safe anymore. It's overrun with zombies, so we've all decided to travel from Florida up to Canada. On our last trip, Carrie and I made friends with a moody goth girl who ended up getting superpowers from a stale burger, and a Mexican wrestler called El Satan with a penchant for firearms. Then, Carrie found a toy in her fast food that summoned a killer moose. Sadly, we ended up getting into a heated argument in the car and were then eaten alive after distractedly driving headlong into a horde of the ravenous undead. Ho hum. Stories like this are what make Death Road to Canada so enthralling, and solid gameplay and humour hold it all together. Ahoy there, I'm Captain Benzie, and today I'm going to be talking about Death Road to Canada, a randomly generated road trip action RPG made by Mad Garden and Rocket Cat Games, where you direct a car full of jerks towards Canada, the last nation left on Earth for some reason. Perhaps it's all the hockey sticks? Before we get into it though, if you enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you could hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you want to go out of your way to be amazing, then check out my Patreon page, where you can pledge to support this channel and earn some super sweet merch for doing so. Alright, let's go! In Death Road, you start with a car, a leader, and a buddy. These are normally randomly generated from a selection of faces, haircuts, outfits, perks, and traits, but you can also jump into the character creator and piece together rough approximations of your friends, family, and worst enemies to take with you on the trip, where you can see how well they'd do, or purposefully try and get them killed just for kicks. Naturally, I made myself and Carrie, giving myself a complete lack of skills and <clears throat> charming personality, whilst giving Carrie her kick-ass nature and love for cars and mechanics. She started with a wrench and a cool car. I got a bad haircut and a scalpel, presumably left over from putting together my Warhammer collection. Disappointingly, there was no captain's hat. Perhaps Mama still has it. We jumped into the car and took to the road, stopping only for supplies and zombie butt-kicking opportunities. Death Road is random every time you play it. Whilst the options you'll come across are influenced by your current cast of characters, it's still pretty wild what you'll be given as options. The game is primarily played across two phases, a text-based decision engine when you're on the road, hopefully in a car, and the action-packed exploration phase. When you're on the road, you'll expend fuel, unless you have none or your car got wrecked or abandoned, in which case you're walking to Canada, or at least until you find another vehicle. You also need to eat and make various decisions about your survival. Sometimes this is as simple as deciding where to camp for the night or what to do when a deer crosses the road. El Satan, our Mexican wrestler friend, decided to shoot it with his 9mm and cook it for us. What a nice guy. Equally, you might meet bandits that just need a good stern talking to, find a possible site to stop and scavenge for supplies, or you might come across an unending horde of undead that you don't spot until you're overwhelmed and right in the middle of them as you're too busy arguing over which type of bean is more likely to play the role of Judas Iscariot in the next episode of VeggieTales. These decisions can impact your character's statistics like strength, mechanical ability, health, or morale. Or they can give you loot like a sweet new ride, a chainsaw, or the aforementioned moose summoning freebie. It really is quite difficult to tell sometimes. When Katarina, the goth girl, decided to take a bite into a spoiled greasy Wonka slider, I was certain that she was on her way to pushing up the roadside daisies. Instead, the gods of burgers bestowed their blessings and she got a boost to her fitness, dexterity and morale? Look, if I'm to be completely honest, this randomness is one of the game's biggest blessings and also its worst curses. If you're wanting to take things seriously and you know actually get to Canada, like some kind of game completing nerd, then this can make it really confusing or frustrating trying to decipher what the right choice would be. On the other hand though, the hilarity of these unexpected moments are what absolutely sold Death Road for me. Sure, I've not actually beaten the game yet, but the stories I've experienced have been priceless. 
In the more action-oriented exploration pieces, you're tasked with running your team through a farm or city or apartment complex or whatever in search of supplies. You grab whatever weapon you can, makeshift or otherwise, and dive through hordes of the undead as you scavenge for food, medical supplies, ammunition or fuel. And for some reason, the folks on this route seem to love storing fuel in their toilets. Sometimes you find new survivors holed up in buildings. Sometimes you find new weapons, which range from the spines of the undead to planks of wood to wrenches, frying pans, chainsaws, shotguns, flamethrowers, hockey sticks, or even furniture. Sometimes you get eaten. And that's really the whole fun of the game. As you play, you do earn Zombo Points, which you can spend to upgrade the perks and traits to be more beneficial and make future runs just that little bit simpler. But it doesn't matter how good your perks are, if morale runs low, everyone starts fighting and then they drive the car into an unending horde of the undead. Of course, it's time to talk about the presentation. The music is normally surprisingly chirpy, with over-the-top gleeful MIDI tracks giving a jocular and light-hearted mood to the zombie bashing proceedings. Sometimes though, it can take you completely by surprise, with some moody and anxiety-inducing drones of horror. The graphics are not for everyone. Personally, I find the over-top stylized pixel art part of the charm, but I recognise that this isn't everyone's cup of Double Double. They suit the feel of the game well and do an admirable job of rendering hordes of zombies in my opinion. Seriously, watch the footage in this and try to count how many different types of zombies there are. Capcom had a huge budget for Resident Evil 2 and still only managed about a dozen different types, but even when I was getting yomped by that horde that we distractedly drove into, I was impressed at how few clones there were. It's these little touches that really make the difference when they're feasting on your spleen, you know. Controls are pretty solid here too. The game does have gamepad support, but I genuinely prefer the touch controls as they make the menus that little bit snappier. Left virtual stick to move, a button to interact, a button to swap whatever's in your hands, and half the bloody screen to tap to swing your weapon at things. Death Road to Canada is one of those games that is an absolute pleasure to pick up and play in a quiet moment. It's raucous, it's ridiculous, and it's remarkably well made. Some folks might call it simplistic, but this, in my opinion, allows it to laser focus on the experience and the humour, and boy howdy does it have those in spades. Death Road to Canada is available on Android, including Play Pass, iOS, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. If you like a bit of zombie-themed humour, you really need to pick this one up.